Let's take a few minutes to talk about caption writing and captions. These are especially important for photojournalists, and you will be graded on your caption writing as you turn in your assignments. So why do we need photo captions? Well, the Poynter Institute for Media Studies Research has underscored a simple fact. People look at photos longer when there's an informative caption. They're easy to write if you learn to ask what questions to ask the subject and save the answers. It's a good idea to write this stuff down so you can remember it when you get back to the office. Just in case, it's good to have contact information for your subject. You're not going to put that in the caption, but if you need to follow up, you can do that if you know where to find your person. People are naturally curious. They want to know basic information. Who's in the photo? Where and when the photo was taken? What's happening? Why is it happening? And in some circumstances, they want to know how you did it. And these questions are referred to as the, as the journalistic five W's and the H. This should not be news to journalism students. You'll have had this in all of your journalism classes so far. Let's talk about basics of captions. Carry a pad and paper with you. If you notice this, this Coloradoan photographer has a camera in one hand and a pad of paper and a pen tucked under her hand so that the minute she's done taking the picture, she can walk up to that person and get their name and get basic caption information. To reiterate, we're looking for who, what, when, where, why, how. If there's doubt about how to write stuff, consult the Associated Press Style Guide. And remember, the caption should be about the content of the photo, not the photographer. So for this photo, it would be a Coloradoan photographer photographs the diversity conference. It would not be, while I was at the diversity conference, I noticed this photographer from the Colorado, and so I took her picture. It should be about the picture, not about you as a photographer. Let's look at this picture for a minute. There's no caption here. So what can we determine about what's going on here? Well, we know whatever it was, it was bad, because there's wood all over the ground. We know it's an emotional moment. The photographer has, has processed the image for, with something of a foreboding sky. To, to, in, to heighten that emotions, but we really don't know what's happened and we don't know the relationship between these two people. But when we look at the caption from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, we get much more information. Caitlin Kendall hugs Chris Logden, 17, near Rennick, Missouri, after a tornado destroyed the trailer Logden lived in with his girlfriend, Nikki Briscoe, and her parents, Billy and Penny Briscoe. The parents were killed by the tornado that roared across mid-Missouri a Sunday night, and Nikki broke her back in two places, logged and suffered a broken nose and various bruises and scratches. So we know these two are friends. We know that he's, his girlfriend is seriously injured and her parents have died, and we know the place he's living in is gone. Definitely a, a major emotion. If you're in this area, you know what happened, and this helps personalize what happened. If you're not in this area, for example, somebody in Colorado sees this picture, it helps put that in context and, and helps you care about what's happened uh, three states away. Notice also that we've got a, a photo credit in the, in the caption, um, photo by B. Forbes, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. What's missing here is that date that we were talking about. This caption assumes that we are looking at this Monday or Tuesday of that week. As we look back for, with, a, with history, we don't know what year this was, and we don't know what month this was. Always assume that your photos are going to be part of history, so put as much of that detail in there as possible. Let's look really closely at, the, at, at captions and caption style. Who's in the photograph? You want to use their name and some other identifier. Tara Williams, a junior communications major at Colorado State University. Keith Kidder, six, a first grader at Bowder Elementary. Joyce McConnell, president of Colorado State University. And with things like Colorado State University, you want to spell that out on first reference, and then you can abbreviate once you've established which CSU we're talking about. Because remember, it could be CSU, meaning Cal State University. Best to read the spelling of, the, of his or her name back. Always ask their name, even if it's John Smith, 
because you don't know if it's J-O-N-S-M-Y-T-H-E. If there's more than one subject, identify them left to right, describe their role, describe their action. Uh, if it's really obvious, you could describe what they're wearing. What's in the photograph? It seems a little redundant, but the caption could, should clearly and concisely state the content of the photo. Colorado State's Joe Smith shoots a three-point basket. Pooter Fire Authority firefighters spray water on a house fire. Karen Smith serves Fort Collins High School students lunch. Talk about when and where the photo was made. And the image itself doesn't necessarily convey this information. Think back to that tornado picture. Digital media style is month, day, year. For example, February 8th, 2017. Since the images are gonna be around a long time, be sure that you get the date, the specific date. Abbreviate months with six or more letters. This is AP style when used with a date. Go ahead and spell those months out if it's not used with a date. And then artfully weave in where and when the photo was taken. Don't lead with on the oval was the fall address. The place should be identified even if it's obvious where the photo was taken. Remember somebody besides you may be using this photo and somebody besides our time may be using this photo, and they may not know, looking at the photo, where the plaza is if they're 100 years from now. Talk about why the photo was taken. The photo relates to a special photographic technique or other unusual element of content. You can weave that reference into the content, for example, a long exposure. Why can be used to strengthen the association between the photo and a story, especially if you're looking at maybe a detailed picture. When the photo is not accompanying the article, the why becomes way more important because the photo isn't gonna be having the support of all of that text information for context. Details. Enrich that caption's content with detail where it's appropriate. Maybe include a quote. If, if it's important to the meaning of the image, you could say something about the colors. You see this a lot with scenery in the fall. Keep the caption to two, three sentences. Much more than that gets kind of hard to read. Remember, use active verbs. The first sentence should be present tense, then past tense for the remainder of the caption. Joyce McConnell delivers the fall address, not the fall address was delivered by Joyce McConnell. Let's look at a few pictures. Give yourself a chance to write the caption, make up names if, it, if you have to, because it's unlikely you're gonna know these people. But take a, take a minute or so, pause the video, look at the picture and write yourself a caption. And then we'll compare what you came up with with the real thing. So here's what they came up with with the post. Sergeant Travis Brill reads while his son Caden, six, vies for his attention. Iraq changed the Marines of Brill's unit because 23 soldiers were killed in action, more casualties than any other unit. The survivors made it home from the war, but they brought the war with them. Photo by Andrea Bruce, The Washington Post. Who, what, where? We're not identifying the when very well, are we? Again, this is assuming that this is running with another story and that, and that that will have the, the supporting information. Let's try another one. Go ahead and pause the video and write yourself a caption. So how'd you come out? Captain Sheila Jenkins comforts her daughter, Katie, while holding the hand of her husband, Chief Warrant Officer Claude Jenkins, as he departs a bus on, to his flight in Iraq, August 23rd, 2006, there's the date. Jenkins is part of the 82nd Airborne Division deploying to Iraq, there's a why. Photo by Andrew Kraft, the Fayetteville Observer. So it connects the what's going on in the picture and what's going on in the picture that we don't necessarily understand gives us deeper meaning. To summarize, we're looking for who, what, when, where, why, and how. And this is gonna be graded information as we look at your captions.